Are you wondering how to add products that have different sizes, colors, or other variations on your WordPress website? In this video today, I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to add variable products on your WordPress website using WooCommerce. And at the end, I'm going to give you a free worksheet on how to drastically improve your product listings to help you sell more online. I'm Nate Moeller, founder of Web801, where we turn brochure websites into sales machines. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. If you want your website to sell more products, keep watching. Creating variable products in WooCommerce can be a bit tricky. There are a few things you'll need. First, a WordPress website, the WooCommerce plugin, and then products to list and sell. To start, we're at the dashboard of our WordPress site and we'll go down to WooCommerce and then to products and we'll click add new. Once we get here, we'll come up with a title. I'm just gonna put chocolate chip cookies. The next step is a long description. With a long description, there's a few things that I recommend. Here they are. The product description, sell. You need to focus on the benefits. That's not the features, that's how the product will improve a person's life or make their life better. Long descriptions can tell a story. How was the product made? Who inspired it? What goes into creating it? Who loves it? Etc. Also, be natural. One of the ways I help people with the be natural is how would you sell this product if you were talking to someone in person? And then make that part of your long description. And then finally make it scannable. And as I put this content in, I'm starting to make bullet points. So it's just scannable content. People aren't gonna read novels of content or big paragraphs. Keep your paragraph short, two to three sentences and bullet points or numbered lists. Also, use images and video. One of the first places to put images is over here on the right, where you can set the product image. When I click on that, this will show pictures I've already uploaded, or I can click Upload Files and select a file, find the product, picture, and then click Open, and that image will upload. I will take note of the size, 500 by 452 pixels, I want to try to follow that, and this is a PNG image, and then I'll set product image. And I like to add a couple, maybe three to four images. So I'm going to click Add Product Gallery Images, upload a file, select files, and then I'm going to pick that one. For now, I'll just add that second one, Add to Gallery, and there's a couple pictures of a chocolate chip cookie. With video, I would probably add a video in the long description, and I would get that after uploading it to YouTube, I would embed the image here. So I'd go to YouTube, I would click on the share button, get the link, copy it, then go back and paste it right in here. Or if I'm on the visual editor, it's gonna show up like this. And that's how I'd add a video. We'll talk more about video in an upcoming video. Next is the product data. So I'm gonna scroll down here. Uh, this is Yoast SEO. We'll discuss that at a later time. But product data, this is an important piece. So you'll see simple product, and if I click on the drop down, grouped, external affiliate, and what we're talking about today is variable product. So I'll click on that. And when I click on variable product, then a few things will change. The first thing I need to do is go to attributes. I'm gonna click on attributes. And this is where I'm going to make different attributes. In this case, it could be size or quantity or price, but I'll just add a few just to give you an idea. So if I, let's say I did size and then I would do small, medium, large, extra large, XX large, or XXL. And this would be used for variations and I'll click save attributes. Then I would click add another one and I would do color. 
and now do red. And I'm hitting a bar, which looks like this. Blue, green, orange. The next attribute I'm going to add is quantity. And this one will be more applicable for this particular product. And I'll add 2, 6, 12, and 24. And then I'll click used for variations and then I'll click save attributes. For this particular product, size and color aren't really applicable, but I just wanted to show you how those could be added. So it gives you some different ideas. Once we've got attributes added, we now go to variations. And when I get here, I'll see add variation or I'll see create variations from all attributes. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click go. And you'll see at the top a button shows up that says, are you sure you want to link all variations? This will create a new variation for each and every possible combination of variation attributes. That means that going back to the attributes, it'll say size, color, and quantity. It'll make renditions of all of those. So yes, for now we'll click OK. And then it's going to populate with about 50 different variations. Yep, 50 variations added. I click OK again, and then they show up. Now this is the important part. Once we get the variations created, I'm going to click on each of them, and you'll see it has different information. I don't really have to worry about skew. I do have to create enabled. I could make an, an image for each variation if I wanted to. Like if this was a small red cookie in a bundle of two, I could make that picture right there. But I do specifically have to worry about the price. If I don't put in a price, the product won't be available for people to buy. So in this particular one, I'm going to say every variation of quantity of two is going to be $5. So I'm going to go down through here and say quantity of two, five. Quantity of two, five. Two, five. Okay, and then every, and then I can, I can close this one out by just clicking on it. And then quantity of six, I'm going to say is $10. And so then I need to go to every one that's quantity of six. I'm going to close this one, is $10. Quantity of six is 10. And this does take a little bit of time, uh, especially if I'm going to change the prices. That, that can be kind of a pain. But... In the real world of this cookie, for example, we won't have the, the size and the color. We'll just have quantity, so it will be a little bit easier. So I close these up. And then 12, I'm going to say, is $15. And then finally, on this particular one, I'm going to say 24 is $20. So I have to go through all the variations and make sure I put in the price. And you'll see because this doesn't have a lot, this is just page one of four pages. So I'm going to save this for now. And then I'm going to go up here and update the product. And then I'm going to show you on the front end what this product looks like when we get it all set up right. So you'll see the chocolate chip cookie from $5 to $20. There's the short description. The size, I'm going to say small the color red, the quantity 24, and the price shows at 20. But I, only, I didn't do this for everyone. I, didn't, I don't think I got to orange. So if I click a different variation that I haven't put a price in yet, it's gonna say, sorry, this product is unavailable. Please choose a different combination. That's why I have to make sure I go through all the product data here in the variations, and not just this first page, but all four pages. The next thing we'll talk about is the product short description. You'll see I've already put this in. This is just a quick summary of maybe what I've put in the long description. If I go to the product itself, this is where the short description is going to show up. The long description will show up down below with, there's our video. So the short description doesn't have to take too much time. It's just one or two sentences, just a quick explanation of what the product is. Another important part of adding a variable product is the product category. You'll see here I have one that's uncategorized, that's a default category, and then I've created one called Crave Classic. 
Let's say I wanted to create another one and call this one Crave Specialty. And I would click Add New Category. As you see, when I click Add New Category, it automatically keeps this product in both the Crave Classic and the Crave Specialty. I'm going to uncheck Specialty for now, but that's how I add categories on a variable product. So, in summary today, we've talked about adding a title to your product. We've talked about creating a long description, which includes a description that sells the product. We focus on the benefits for the client or the visitor. Possibly we tell a story about the product, who made it, how it was made, how it benefits people, maybe even testimonials from people that use the product, and we're natural. Act as if we're talking to a friend about the product. And then make it scannable, bullet points, a video, numbered lists, things like that. We also talked about product data where we switched from a simple product, which is the default, to a variable product. And then we added first attributes, so in this case size, color, and quantity. For purposes of this product, I'm just going to remove the size and I'm going to remove the color for now, which makes that easy. And then I'll just have quantity. I'm going to save that. So we talked about attributes and then we also talked about variations. And now you'll see, because I removed some of those attributes, now there's a lot less work to do to get the, the prices all up to date. We talked about adding prices. We also talked about the short description, which shows up down here. We talked about adding images, both a featured image and additional images. We talked about categories, putting the product into a category. And then finally, this area here is, I've already published this, so this is where we update. As we make changes to our product, we always want to make sure we update or publish it so that visitors can actually see it. Now let's talk about the bonus. In the description below, I've added a link to a free worksheet you can download that includes how to make a good product description. It also talks about 10 tips that you can use to, to make product descriptions that sell, that focus on benefits, that tell a story, that are natural and that are scannable. I've also included a checklist of the things we talked about today. So you can print this out and as you add new variable products to your WooCommerce website, you'll have kind of a step-by-step -step guide. Again, I'm Nate Moeller from Web801 and thanks so much for being part of this video today.